Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and on today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to learn how to pan and zoom not only a sequence of images in Photoshop, but also video as well as stills. So I'm going to begin here in Lightroom, and you can see that I have a series of images. Now these were taken um, while the camera was obviously sitting on a tripod, and I used an intervalometer in order to take a photograph every certain amount of time. Now I want to create a video out of these, and I've already adjusted them a little bit. I've added a little bit of contrast and a little bit of clarity in Lightroom, and I've also exported the original RAW files so that they're JPEG files. That's important because when we take this into Photoshop, we can't take a sequence of RAW files. You have to take a sequence of JPEG files. I've also resized them down a little bit. They're not at the full resolution that they were captured because I was using a digital camera that captures about 5,000 pixels across. And we don't need that much resolution or that much information when we're going to ultimately output these to HD video. So so I've gone ahead and resized them down to 1600 pixels at their width. And the reason that I chose 1600 is because I actually want to pan across these images over time, and I didn't want Photoshop to have to interpolate up the information because ultimately I'm going to be um, creating a video that is 1280 by 720. All right, one last thing to notice here is that they are numbered sequentially. So I'm starting at one, two, three, four, and so on. And they don't have to start at one. Your images don't have to start. The sequence itself doesn't have to start at one. It's just that there can't be any gaps in the sequence. All right, so how do I get these into Photoshop? Well, let's go ahead and switch over to Photoshop, and I'm going to actually use the open dialog box. So I'll use Command or Control O to open. I'll navigate to that folder full of images. And I don't want to select all of the images because if I do, you'll notice that I don't have the option to open as an image sequence. Instead, I'll just select the first image in the sequence and then choose image sequence, click open, and then choose the frame rate that I want. In this case, I'll leave it set to 30, but you can either select from the drop down here or you can just enter in your own frame rate. So if you wanted it to look maybe a little bit choppier, as the time progressed, you could lower this down to maybe like 8 or 10 frames a second. But I want it to be a little bit smooth, so I'll go ahead and click OK. And now we can see in my Layers panel, I have a video group. And inside that video group, I have Layer 1, which is my image sequence, which has been turned into a video layer for me. And in fact, if we look down here at the timeline, we can see the video group. And if I tap the space bar, we can actually play this video layer and see this sequential time lapse. All right, one of the things that you might want to do if you don't see the timeline down here is you might want to change your workspace. So here I've got it set to Essentials, although I have changed it a bit. So instead, I'll go down to Motion, and that just makes the timeline a little bit larger. Excellent. Now, when Photoshop created this video from the sequence of images, it did it at the size of the image, and I want to change that. So I'm going to go under the Image menu, and I'll choose Canvas Size. I'm not going to choose Image Size because I don't actually want to resize the entire image area. What I want to do is I want to make the canvas size smaller, the size that I'm going to output the movie, so that I then have extra image on the side so that I can pan the video. The width of this is going to be 1280, and the height is going to be 720. And you'll notice that, that this aspect ratio, this 16 by 9 aspect ratio, is not the same aspect ratio as the original. So I'll have a little extra on the top and bottom as well. Now I can choose where I want to anchor this. So for example, I could anchor it to the left side so that I could then pan to the right. But if you forget or you're not quite sure, you can just anchor it into the center, and then we can move the image in a moment. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. I'll click OK. It's going to warn me that some clipping will occur. That's fine. We'll proceed. And now if I select my Move tool, you can see that not only is there information to the left and right, there's also information at the top and the bottom. Because like I mentioned, the aspect ratio of the original does not match the aspect ratio of the output or the, the size of the video that I want to output. All right. The important thing is, is that the originals, or at least the ones that I exported, we're 1600 pixels wide. What that does is it gives me the ability to pan left and right here without Photoshop having to resample up the image. 
Now, what's the easiest way to pan the video? Well, right now, if I use the triangle here on the video clip, you'll notice that I have options for the video, like duration and speed, and I also have options for audio. This isn't what I want, though. I want some motion options, and in order to get those, I need to change this layer here into a smart object. So I'll just right mouse click and choose Convert Smart Object. Now that it's a smart object, you'll notice that it changed the background here to purple, and when I click on the arrow here, I now have different options for motion. Here I can choose to pan and zoom, to pan, zoom, rotate, rotate, and zoom. In this case, let's keep it simple. I just want to pan the image, and I can put in an angle. In this case, I want to start panning from left to right, so I'll enter in 180. I can also choose to resize to fill the canvas, or I can uncheck that if I like what I'm seeing right here and I don't want Photoshop to resize it. I'll go ahead and tap the Enter key, and let's go back in time to the beginning of the clip, and now I'll tap the space bar, and we can play the clip. You can see that it's making the preview here as it goes along, and you can see in the image area that we're panning, so this tree is going to start to disappear, and over here on the right, we're going to start to see the little hut or house over there. Now, the first time that you're previewing it, it might take a little bit longer while Photoshop is actually creating that preview, but if I tap the space bar again, the second time you can see that it's playing in real time. And that's all there is to it. If you simply want to pan left to right, or we could go in and add a zoom, or we could zoom and pan, we can do all of that just using the motion control inside of the timeline in Photoshop CS6. Now, for those of you who want more control, let's go ahead and go back to Lightroom. I'm going to move to this folder, and we're going to open up this image. I'll use Command E or Control E, and I want to edit the original because this is a layered Photoshop document. You can see over here in my Layers panel that I have two different layers. I have the layer down here at the bottom, which is a video layer, and then I have layer two, which is a photograph. So let's just begin with layer one. In fact, I can go ahead and double click on that and we'll just call this video so that everyone's clear as to what this is. There is also a video icon here that will help us to quickly identify that that's a video layer. Now, as I use my uh, time insertion marker here and scrub along the timeline, you can see that we're only seeing the video, and of course that's because layer two is turned off. The eye icon is, is clicked off in the layers panel. One of the things that I know about this video layer is that there was audio that was recorded with the video, and it's actually terrible audio, so I want to turn that off. So before I do anything else, I'm going to use this right arrow here. I'm going to go to audio, and I'm just going to mute the audio. Now, I want to know what size the original footage was, so I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Command Option I or Control Alt I, in order to go to image size. And you can see that this was captured 1920 by 1080. And I don't need that high of a resolution, so using the image size dialog box, I'm going to change this, and I'm going to enter in 720, and Photoshop will automatically calculate the new width for me at 1280. Now, when I click OK, Photoshop is going to show me a dialog box that's telling me that if I'm going to transform, basically make this image size smaller, it's going to automatically convert my video layer into a smart object, which is great. I'll go ahead and click Convert. Now, you might be wondering why that's such a great thing. Well, if I wanted to add a zoom or a pan on this, Photoshop hasn't thrown away all that extra data that was captured. So if I want to zoom in, for example, Photoshop will use all of that extra information. It won't need to interpolate up or make up any data. And you can see over here that my video layer is now a smart object. All right, last time using the still image sequence, at this point, all I did is I used this arrow, and then I chose the motion that I wanted to apply. And we could do that as well here, but I wanted to show you another way to do this so that you could have a little bit more control. And the way that we would do that is we would use the transform attribute in the timeline. So my time insertion marker is at the very beginning of my video, and I'm going to click on the transform stopwatch because I like where the video is right here. This is where I want it to start. So I'll click the stopwatch, and that adds a keyframe at this point in time. Now I could move forward in time, 
And then I could make a change to the image. I could reposition it by using Command or Control T for free transform. Now, it looks like I can't zoom this in or out. It looks like the image is the same size as the the canvas, and, and it is, but if we notice up here the width and height, it's been scaled down to 66.67%. So if I increase the width and the height, say to 100% each, now we can see that I can go ahead and zoom up to this amount, to this zoom level, and Photoshop doesn't have to interpolate up any information, so that's great. I'll go ahead and tap Enter or Return, and when I do, you'll notice that Photoshop added another keyframe in my timeline. So now, between my first frame here, that first keyframe, and the second keyframe, Photoshop is going to zoom in. And you might be thinking, well, sure, I could have used the motion controls. You can use motion controls to zoom, but you don't have as much control because I wanted it to just zoom to this point. And maybe from this point until the end of the movie, maybe I want it to start zooming out, or maybe I want it to start moving the image over to the left or the right doing a pan. So now you can see how using the controls here give us more control. I'll make this a little bit smaller here, and we can bring that over. And maybe I want to bring it over to the right there, and just up a little bit. Tap Return or Enter, and you can see Photoshop again has added that keyframe. All right, so let's start back at the beginning here, and I'll just tap the space bar, and you can see that between the first two keyframes, I'm zooming in. We reach that keyframe, and then it slowly starts zooming out and moving over to the right a little bit. All right, excellent. So that's the way to manually add your pan and zoom to a video. Now let's talk a little bit about stills. The layer two, this is my still photograph, so let's make that visible by clicking on the eye icon there. Now layer two, let's rename that to still and tap return or enter. Now this was a, a, a camera raw file, so it was a DNG. It is a very large file, so obviously I want to scale this down a little bit. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it small like, we're gonna kind of play like a picture in a picture kind of effect here. So before I start transforming it, because I'm smart, I know that I might change my mind, I'm gonna make this into a smart object as well. So we'll right mouse click on the still image, convert it to the smart object, and this way I can transform and make this larger or smaller and not lose any quality. So let's go ahead and start transforming it. You can see the transformation handles go way off the screen, so I can use Command-0 or Control-0 in order to zoom out. And I'll just say bring it down to about this size for now, and then tap Enter or Return. All right, Command or Control-0 will just zoom me in a little bit. You can see we can't really see the layer underneath this, so what I'd like to do is create a mask. So I'll just grab my marquee tool, and we'll just say that I want to position, or I just want to see this still image within this area on the left-hand side of the frame. Well, to do that, since I've already got my selection and my layers targeted, I'll click on the mask icon in order to add my mask. Now, I want to move the image within that mask, but right now if I grab the Move tool, we know that if I move the image, it's also going to move the mask. So let's undo that, Command or Control Z, and let's separate or unlink the mask from the photograph. So I'll click on the link icon in the links panel, and then I'll click to make sure that I've got the image targeted, not the mask. And now we can transform this. And let's go ahead and zoom out here so we can get those transformation handles. And let's go ahead and maybe just make it that big. We'll start it maybe right in the middle. I can just use my arrow keys to nudge that over and down, and tap Enter or Return. Now the thing with video is that you do have to pay attention to where you are in your timeline before you start setting down your keyframes. So let's make sure that we go back to the beginning of the timeline. And you know what else? I'd kind of like to separate this image from the background, so we'll just do a few quick things. Um, while the still image layer is targeted, I'll go to my effects, and we'll just add a drop shadow. And we can just pull that drop shadow out a little bit. That should separate it from the background. We'll make it a little bit softer. And maybe we'll also go here and just add a stroke on the inside of that image and click OK. All right, so that just kind of separates those two. The other thing we could do is go down to the video layer, and we could just change the opacity. Now, since I have the Move tool selected, if I just tap like the 8 key, then it would change the video layer to 80%. 
Okay, so going back up to my image, I'm at the beginning of my timeline. I want to close the video group so we make sure that we know that we're working with a still image right now. And you can see that we have some additional options with a still image because we've got that mask. And also we've got a style applied. So we could change um, all sorts of parameters here, but we're just going to concentrate on transforming the image. So right here at the beginning, I like where my image is. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch in order to add my keyframe. And then we'll just move forward in time. Again, I could use, right, if I just wanted like a single pan or a single zoom, I could go up here and add motion. But if I want more control, then I don't want to add the motion there. I want to actually add it with the keyframes. So let's say at this point in my timeline, we'll do a command or control T. I'll just go ahead and make this a little bit larger. Hit return or enter to apply that. And then maybe we'll go a little bit further. And again, command or control T make this a little bit larger and maybe scoot it up a little bit so that it looks like it's moving. And then again, we can go further in time and again, apply Command or Control T to transform this. Now, I think this might actually look a little bit funny because there's going to be way too much motion going on at one time, but I just wanted to show you that you can really go to any point in the timeline and change the position of any layer, whether it's a still layer, whether it's a sequence of images that's been turned into a movie layer or a movie or video layer itself. All right, so we'll scoot all the way back here to the beginning of the timeline. We could also use this icon right here to return to the beginning and then just tap the space bar in order to play that. And you can see that not only is the video moving, but the still is also moving. We get to that keyframe, it's gonna start moving in a different direction at a different speed. And then we're gonna get to the next keyframe and we can go ahead and start scaling that back down. And that's all there is to it. Once you've got your image the way you like it, you can go ahead and choose to export this. That's as easy as going under the file menu and then export and going to render video. And I have another video that's all about how to render um, your video in Photoshop CS6, so we don't need to go through all of that right now, but basically you would pick your format here, maybe H.264, and then from there we have a variety of different presets right here that you can choose from. So for example, if you were going to YouTube or you were going to Vimeo, that's all set up for us. Okay, excellent. I'll go ahead and cancel out of here. I just want to mention as a last kind of note that you can also obviously use other types of layers. So if you wanted to add some type, for example, you could just add a type layer to this document and then use these same controls in order to pan or move your type layers or your shape layers or whatever other content you have here in Photoshop. Well, that's how easy it is to zoom and pan both your videos and your still images in Photoshop CS6. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me.